Well lads, welcome back to the workshop. Today we have a Milwaukee grinder. Even though I keep asking not to send Milwaukee in, you still always get Milwaukee stuff. But, at least this one, Milwaukee grinder. This is quite an easy one as long as the motor still works. So, brushless Milwaukee grinder. And a battery. I'll check the battery first. One point eight seven volts. So that's probably not gonna be fixed. A little quick juke at it anyway. Just we have a wee see. Once they're down that low, it's generally not worth fixing them. But they can't be fixed. So obviously seen water. Dirty water at that. May have shorted out. Totally dead. Not even a volt. There's a half a volt. Another half. Another half. So that is too far gone. Maybe if you're pushing it, if there was a volt or maybe even half a volt left on all the cells, you could slowly spike it with a power supply or a RC charger and slowly get the voltage back up again. But when they're down at zero volts, they're not worth fixing. We should leave that completely. So that's either a bad battery or water damage. To be honest, I would say it's a wee bit of both. Obviously, water get on, but cells aren't corroded at all. So I'd imagine that's also a bad battery. Get rid of that. Check the grinder. Okay. Common thing for them. Yeah. Bearing. Does the motor still work? That's what you need to know first. Ooh. We're okay. It doesn't sound good, but at least it works. Full of dirt. There we go. Same old, same old. One bad bearing. I'm always surprised people actually leave them so long to get fixed. Surely that was making a terrible noise before it eventually failed. Now, the main thing is, did it burn through the plastic housing? It's actually okay. It must be a little bit hot, but it doesn't actually melt the plastic. So that's okay. But the main thing, as always, the bearings totally collapsed. Where did the wee steel balls go? So make sure you run an air compressor across this, especially down in here, to make sure all the actual steel balls are out. 
So the last thing you want is to fix this up, put a new bearing on, and one of them steel balls make their way into the motor. Cause a lot of damage. Okay, that's the body cleaned out. All debris removed. drop straight back into place. Nothing complicated about it. Put your paddle switch into place. Close it up. This end one down here is just a T10 instead. The longer screw. The air deflector sits on top, and that's your body ready to go. Now, on to the main problem the bearing. Now, I'm going to do the normal way to take these off. You can get specialist equipment for gripping this and pulling it off. You can sometimes grip in the vise and give it a sharp pull, sometimes it comes off. Generally, the way I always do it is a grinder. Take a grinder with a wee anox disc, a wee skinny one mil disc, just grind off just to there. Grind it all the way back just to touch, just to start to touch the inner shaft. That'll break the clamping hold off the bearing on the shaft, and you can just pull it straight off then. So there's definitely a repair anybody can do at home, because it'll face it if you have a cordless. Four and a half inch grinder, you more than likely will have a corded one. So pull out your old corded grinder to fix your new brushless one. Just showing the shaft through that old bearing. There's a pair of these here, or a vice grips, or a vice, even better. You should be able to just pull it straight off. And on your shaft, then. Might have the littlest, tiniest wee nick. So that'll not affect the bearing. The new bearing will still hold just as tight on that shaft. And lastly, the question I get asked all the time: What size of bearing on the Milwaukee grinders? This is a 605 bearing. Now these ones are fitted generally with a metal wrist. Metal is better for higher speed because this is a grinder, but rubber is better for sealing against dust and dirt. Generally these things get badly abused. You're better off fitting a rubber seal than a metal one. Doesn't matter what you fit, both will do the exact same thing. Metal ones will be better for speed, for last and your batteries and whatnot, but for longevity, rubber one, you'll get a bit more time out of. Very easy to fit. And get yourself some sort of metal ring. It's just a wee socket. No bigger than the inside race. So it's only the inside race here you want to be pressing on. Set that on it. Put that onto your vise. 
close up the vise and it'll push on the bearing. If you had a bearing press, you can use a bearing press. If you're stuck and you have nothing, you can just use a hammer. Tap it on nice and gently. Only hitting this here wrist. Doesn't take a lot of force to put this on. You'll not damage this bearing too much if you use a hammer, just as long as you don't hit the outer wrist. I'm doing a pinch, but a vice or a bearing press is better. Simple as that. Now, also, as I should have mentioned, if your housing has melted down in here where the bearing sits, if that has melted a little bit, or it doesn't look like it's holding the bearing tightly, what you can do, get a blowtorch, heat up a wee fine point, until it's red hot, and put a wee po few pock marks all the way around the two halves of the clamshell. That'll help grip the bearing. Also, when you're fitting the bearing, don't fit it all the way on. Fit it maybe halfway or three quarters onto the shaft. So it's sitting proud a little bit. Because that actual housing on here has space to take that bearing way further back. It's only gripping the very, very end of the bearing back here. So if you actually put it on a wee bit less, it'll grab hold of more of the housing to help centre it again. That's the old bearing race. As you can see, that was a rubber one as well. And that's her. Ready to go. Sounds better already. These first two screws can be initially hard to get on. You can take off this whole head. With these four screws and take off the gear head. Makes it a lot easier. But you can also do it without it. Just get the two of them started. That's her. One more Milwaukee grinder. Saved. Actually a decent little grinder. It would probably be the best grinder, cordless, brushless grinder on the market. If it wasn't for that bearing. They would just fit a high quality NSK bearing onto that grinder. That would probably the, be the best four and a half inch grinder on the market. But for 25 euro, it's not hard to fix up. <coughs> Sounds like new. That's how you fix the Milwaukee grinder with a notorious bad bearing. One Milwaukee grinder. Fixed up. One battery. Not worth fixing. Thanks for watching lads. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, if you like the video lads, give us a like. If you like tool repairs, tips and tricks, give us a follow as well. Cheers.